Rivalries are a cornerstone of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. After watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters for four years and seeing the rivalry between Yugi and Kaiba unfold in real time, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX would face its first challenge of making a rival as entertaining and compelling as Kaiba. Who else could match the energy of the infamous egotistical duelist himself with his iconic lines and incredible dueling skills? This new rival would have big shoes to fill. While he's no Seto Kaiba, he left his mark on Yu-Gi-Oh's history and stood out as his own character. From bully to lovable hero, ladies and gentlemen, enter the one and only Chaz Princeton. Chaz Princeton, known as Jun Manjome in the Japanese version, is one of Jaden Yuki's rivals throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh GX series. At the beginning of this series, Chaz starts as an arrogant duelist who attempts to bully Jaden and his friends. Hosting an illegal duel and stealing his opponent's cards, Chaz was not a good guy. After being defeated by his classmates and demoted in his rank, Chaz abandons Duel Academy instead of facing the shame of his crimes and defeat. However, leaving the Duel Academy would be the best thing for him as this would start him on the path of self-improvement and redemption. When saved by the professor of North Academy and losing his old deck, Chaz would have to work harder than ever for his spot at North Academy. Building a deck out of random cards and meeting his friend Ojama Yellow, Chaz was ready to show he was no slacker. After defeating all of North Academy and becoming their top student, Chaz would finally get a second chance at redemption. Abandoning his old obelisk blue jacket, he would acquire a black jacket, spikier black hair with a new deck to match. The Chaz was ready to make a comeback. After his return to the series, Chaz's dueling skills were on full display. Chaz took down an entire academy with a deck of random cards, beat Slade in a match with a handicap, and bested multiple enemies during the series. Chaz's dueling skills improved during the series without question. His dueling skills were on par or even better than Jaden's, which made him a good rival for him during their battles. What made Chaz really stand out as a character are the vulnerable moments we see him go through during the series. Chaz breaking down before his match in the bathroom with Jaden from the expectations of his brothers showcases why he is the way he is. He has to win and can't treat duel monsters like a game, contrasting Jaden's philosophy on dueling. Duel monsters for Jaden is supposed to be a chance to bring people together and showcase who they are. But for Chaz, this is a lesson he didn't have the luxury to understand. After being defeated by Jaden, his brothers disown him in front of the entire academy. With nothing left to lose and a chance at redemption from Jaden and the old gang, Chaz decides to take control of his life and finish his semesters at South Academy. With the help of his friends and Ojamas, Chaz Princeton's incredible dueling skills and path to redemption would make him one of the greatest rivals in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. With that being said, we're going to take a look at his deck, playstyle, and theme to determine what if he played Card Fight Vanguard In the What If series, every character's deck has a theme or playstyle that helps me decide which clan would fit them in the Card Fight Vanguard series. But not this time. Chaz Princeton is an exception to this rule since he can play anything. No, seriously, he can. Chaz has changed or adjusted his deck several times throughout the series and holds the record for being the character who's made the most changes to his deck. In the first half of the season, he plays a Dark Fiend deck and then changes it to a Machine Union deck after Crowler gives him brand new cards. When he goes to North Academy and loses his old deck, he constructs a deck filled with random cards to pass the school's test. When he becomes a top student at North Academy, he gets an Armed Dragon deck from the Chancellor, but adds Ojama cards to it after he gets Ojama Black and Ojama Green from the episode Sibling Rivalry. In the Society of Like arc, he makes two more adjustments to his decks, adding the Beatron archetype to his main deck before Sartorius gives him the White Knight Warrior deck. After being released from Sartorius' control and before the Ubel season, he returns his Machine Union cards back into his main deck, giving Chaz three different boss monsters to work with. Chaz's versatility as a player showcases his ability to think on his feet 
and adapt to multiple playstyles. Without a theme to rely on, but different archetypes for his deck, I'll have to emphasize more on his playstyle to help determine which clan would be best for him. Chaz's three main boss monsters are Ojama King, Arm Dragon Level 10, and VWXYZ Dragon Catapult. Try saying that three times fast. A beast, dragon, and machine that share a similar control playstyle. These boss monsters all have the same ability to control your opponent's board or control what they can do with their monsters. A staple to his playstyle, retiring his opponent's monsters in mass or setting up his other cards then clearing the board entirely to go in for the final attack. Chaz's control playstyle and ability to manage a deck with multiple win conditions helped me select these two very different clans for him. For Chaz Princeton, I have chosen the Kagiro and Mega Colony clan as the two clans he will take on. Now this might be very strange, but let me break it down to you. The Kagiro and Mega Colony clan are two clans that specialize in the control playstyle. Kagiro has dragons, demons, and warriors. The Mega Colony clan has insects and machines. These clans have nothing similar design-wise, but because of their playstyle and versatility that their main boss units offer, it makes them great clans for Chaz to work with. Chaz's armed dragons were the highlight of his gameplay during the second half of seasons 1 and 2. They made more appearances than his dragon catapult did, giving this card priority. Armed Dragons in Yu-Gi-Oh! are a level up archetype that takes the first level and after meeting certain conditions, allows you to level up into a better version of itself. Armed Dragon Level 10's counterpart in the Vanguard series, I believe, is Blazing Flare Dragon and to mimic his level up playstyle, we're going to use Embodiment of Victory Olive. Blazing Flare Dragon and Olive are Vanguards with different win conditions but have great synergy. Combined, they allow you to evolve your units faster and retire your opponent's rear guards with their effects. Either one of these cards has the ability to count as a finisher, meaning Chaz can set up with All Leaf into Blazing Flare Dragon, or stay on one of them and beat his opponent down with powerful attacks and clear their board with card effects. Kagiro's control playstyle and the unit theme will highlight Chaz's style of play from Season 1 to Season 2. Comparing his Dark Fiend deck and Warrior deck together, they're going to make great counterparts with Chaz's Fiery Dragons and Fiend-like Vanguard from the Kagiro clan. Now that we've seen what the Kagiro clan has to offer, let's look at how Mega Colony is just as suitable as this clan. It's no secret that in this series of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the Ojamas are Chaz's most important cards. He himself even calls these little guys the aces of his deck so it's imperative that we make sure we have cards similar to what the Ojamas do for his deck build. The Ojama brothers helped him grow as a duelist and change his philosophy on dueling and the value of weaker cards. The Ojama trio's counterparts are the mutant units of Mega Colony. The Mega Colony clan has access to different gimmicky playstyles and vanguards that with proper setup could synergize together. Utilizing multiple win conditions and limiting your opponent's moves while setting up for the win is a classic Chaz Princeton move. This clan doesn't have dragons or warriors, but the unorthodox card design and protect playstyle would counter Jaden's dimensional robos from the last episode very well. These two decks have extremely contrasting playstyles that would help Chaz stand out even more as a character in this series. And since he's demonstrated earlier in the series that he's not scared of bugs, I actually think this is something he would give a try. The Kagiro clan and Megakoni clan are two clans that have nothing in common with each other whatsoever besides the way that they control the opponent's boards. And knowing Chaz Princeton after seeing the amount of battles he's had and the amount of handicaps that have been placed on him in terms of dueling, I think that the clan that I've chosen for him will be very fitting and so is the Vanguard. With that being said, card fighters, we are now going to take a look at what deck I have chosen for Chaz Princeton if he were to be in Card Fight Vanguard. Here we are, this is the Mega Colony deck that I have chosen for Chaz Princeton. Now as I stay with all my what if videos, these decks are not meant to be meta, they're just to showcase the cards and the playstyles, as well as the units that I personally believe the character would choose and play. Now for his Mega Colony deck, fitting for his theme, I believe Martial Arts Mutant Master Beetle will be a great vanguard for him. This vanguard has two very powerful effects that would give Chaz the ability to slow down the game and tempo it out 
so that he can use his finisher, Death Warden Antlion, or his other vanguard that he can play around with, which is Venom Stinger. Martial Arts Mutant Master Beetle's first ability is Vanguard or Rearguard Circle based, which means that he can use this card as a main grade 3, or he can use this card as a supporting grade 3 for the other two grade 3s we have in the deck. That is a very classic Chaz way to build his deck, as we've seen with his other deck builds. For the other supporting units in the deck that we have, we have a green, a yellow, and a black card all in the deck that fit his use of Wojama Black, Yellow, and Green as well, such as Sharp Nail Scorpio, the Heal Trigger, and the Starter. We also have other yellow, green, and black cards in the deck that fit as well, such as the Machining Stag Beetle, we also have the Blue Cocktail, and we have Hidden Killer Leaf. There's a lot of combinations of colors that are yellow, black, and green that you can see within this deck that are very fitting to the three Ojama Brothers main color palette. I personally believe that this deck would also work out very well for him. A lot of the units in here have control abilities that are all very different from each other that the opponent would have to deal with. And because this is a protect clan, it automatically gives you access to protect one or two, which will give Chaz a choice of being defensive or offensive, which is something I think he would appreciate, and a great counterpart for Jaden Yuki's Dimensional Robo playstyle. This Mega Colony deck is one I think that is perfect for Chaz. I like all of the units that I've chosen for him, and I think that with Mega Colony's small card pool but unique style of play, being able to swap out different vanguards that could work with some of his favorite units would be something I think he would definitely appreciate. Now that we've seen the Mega Colony variation of this deck, I do want to showcase his Kagero deck that I believe he would play. Moving on to the next deck, we have the Blazing Flayer Dragon and All Leaf deck listed here. Now this deck focuses on something that I think he would enjoy a lot, which is retiring rear guards or taking advantage of All Leaf's evolved ability to go into Blazing Flayer Dragon as a finisher or sitting on either one. Like Master Beetle, Blazing Flayer Dragon is a vanguard with a vanguard and rearguard centric ability. You can use him on the rearguard or put him on the main vanguard, which means that he can work with All Leaf as a supporting unit or as a finisher that we've discussed earlier. Olive himself as a vanguard has the ability to evolve into a higher unit thanks to the embodiment of Shield Lom as well as Bar. Now we don't have the sort of color paletted units I wanted for the Ojamas, but if we wanted to focus more on the armed dragon style of his play as well as his VWXYZ dragon catapult, I think this is a good pick. You have Tord Cannon Dragon who fits the theme of the Dragon Catapult in terms of design, you have the evolving units that are needed to make your embodiment of Armor Olive, and these units do have a more darker and aggressive look to them, which would fit his Hell deck that he had at the beginning of Season 1. It is referenced and does showcase how Chaz played in the earlier set, but I think that with all these different dragons that he has now, it's very fitting for his North Academy deck that's also a very good counterpart to Jaden Yuki's deck. He can blow up Jaden's rear guards while amassing power himself with the Force Marker, just like Jaden does with his Dimensional Robos. We also play cards such as Cool Dragon in this deck that can come out faster on the board, and we have cards like Velikasi and Raupia Dragon that would amass a lot of power. Chaz isn't dumb either, so I had to throw some resource cards in there. Lava Flow Dragon and Eremo, as well as Torrid Cannon Dragon, are all solid cards. Now this is his Kagiro deck, and I think that this would also be a good pick for him. Between the two, I definitely do think that the Mega Colony deck is something Chaz would side more with, simply for the fact that it has the cards that resemble his Ojama units in there, and it's so unorthodox and has so many different playstyles that he can work with and use that I just personally think it'd be more fitting to his personality. Plus, it would be kind of cool to see a Mega Colony person be used as a main character. We, Mega Colony is a clan that has not received the best of love throughout its time during the vanguard era especially in the v premium era that we're using for this video but i think it would be great to see Chaz princeton take this deck to the next level with that being said card fighters that concludes this episode of what if stay tuned for the rest of the videos i have coming out and the other characters i'm going to put out for this series i like to take my time with these videos hence the reason why it took so long but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated about the next one coming out i'll see you later guys peace